Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ray McConnell, CTO uh, Blue Wireless. I was one of the founders a little while ago. Okay. Um, Blue Wireless technology. Um, it's really about the company for a little bit. Um, so we're an, we're an IP company, silicon IP company, getting involved in millimeter wave, which means that uh, it's all about high volume, very low cost. So we're kind of taking the Wi-Fi uh, volume uh, cost model into millimeter wave into the telecoms business. A little bit disruptive, um, and, it, and it's, it seems to be working out. So there's a, there's a lot of interest, certainly in the US, and a, and a growing market all over the place. So, so this is really all about uh, high volume technologies. So it's, um, and uh, we can talk about all the bits and pieces that we're putting together for that, uh, for that market. Okay, so um, presently we're looking at the YGIG, uh, which is, has several names nowadays. Uh, it's the uh, 802.11AD, and they, there is an up and coming AY, which is uh, moving more towards 20, 40, 100 gigabits. Um, I think that's a, that's a while away just at this point in time. We build silicon um, for, these, for these standards, and this is a, um, a chip that's actually in the lab today. Um, back, uh, with zero bugs, and we're very happy about that, and uh, we'll be talking about that um, at a conference next week, in fact. Might even be demoing it. 60 plus engineers in Bristol, silicon design cluster in Bristol, um, and we're, we're growing, that's what the plus means. Um, probably be more than 70 by the end of the year. We have strategic partnerships with, from Arm. Arm are very interested in 5G going forwards. Um, MEC is a key component for that uh, one millisecond uh, uh, latency, i.e. things have to be very localized. Um, and the MEC is really more than just delivering um, content, it's, it's computing things locally, and it could be gaming, it could be anything. Um, and hence, they're very, very interested in that. Uh, we have a few projects on the go, as you do. Um, and uh, uh, let's go to the next slide. So let's just talk about the, the spectrum. I mean, people have been talking about the spectrum all day, so I'll probably bore you a little bit more about this. Um, it's enough to say that that's an awful lot of spectrum be being made available, a huge amount. Um, and uh, so, so, the, so the millimeter wave is very interesting because of that. And that, that spectrum is also short range, relatively short range, which means from a volume perspective for a company like ours, it means there's large numbers of very low cost devices uh, all over the place. That's what this, this is really about. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've seen all this before, uh, E-band, this is the new FCC. Um, so this, the, there are some antenna companies out there in the, uh, uh, in the uh, Y gig domain that are actually have antennas available for that already. Um, okay, so as a company, we're really a kind of a mixture between Y gig and 5G, which is, might, might sound a bit odd, but the, the what we're seeing really is the, the kind of things that we can do with YGIG now are the sort of things we're planning for 5G in 2020, 25. So some of the stuff is available now, in, but we're, as I say, using YGIG to do this. We have customers who are interested in, in taking these kind of technologies and moving into the new radio uh, that's under development. So we'll see how that, uh, how that pans out in the future. Um, we have a number of customers who are very interested in um, this sort of localized densification meshing. So uh, it, it's not backhaul, um, uh, but it kind of is. It kind of has that kind of flavor to it. So you end up with these little router boxes um, with a number of radios in them and are able to, if you like, uh, route traffic to, um, to the appropriate radio or the appropriate endpoint. So it's a kind of a backhaul, um, fixed wireless access kind of technology. In fact, you use both the same devices for both of those. Um, and uh, delivering multi-gigabit uh, fixed wireless access to homes in the US is looking very popular at this point in time. So we think that's gonna, that, that market's going to grow. 
Uh, and these are the components that you need to do this. Uh, uh, Mesh-based systems. Uh, SDN happens to be very convenient because the SON um, methodologies are very similar to the way that an SDN, a localized SDN, is driven. So that's just a very convenient way of building a, a, a wireless uh, uh, self-organizing network. As I say, we use the 60 gig at the moment, but um, we can go to the to V band. In fact, we can go to a number of other bands. So um, it really just depends on the antenna. Uh, we are looking at automotive. Some interesting things happening there at the moment. Uh, so Mark is really a, a radio guy. I'm more of a silicon systems person. But, so this is one of Mark's slides. Um, in, he wanted to point out the differences between the two kinds of technology, um, between the licensed and the, uh, the, the 60 gig unlicensed. This is really about high-speed silicon, high-speed silicon design. That's, so you end up with very, a very fat channel. Um, you, you, you really just throw brute force compute at that to actually get that to perform. Whereas this is more about um, having multiple radios and narrower channels um, and bringing up the, um, the MIMO channels to get the kind of, the, to the, those kinds of performances. Um, so 8 gigabits is the standard for Y gig right now. Uh, but we, we can achieve more than that. That's, the, the silicon is not limited by that at this point in time. Uh, so this is actually quite an old slide nowadays. Um, so this is just a number or, or an example of a number of um, antenna companies that are out there. I actually have one in my pocket, so, as you do. So this is this will this will provide uh, two gigabits um, over 300 meters, um, and it's a 65 nanometer CMOS. Actually, it's a it's a side beam antenna system. Um, so IBM, um, they were early in the market. They, they have a piece of technology. Bell Labs, um, IMEC have, have, uh, have an IP that they've been developing over the years. Um, this is the side beam device here. Uh, and of course, you can buy Y gig devices right now. Um, you, can, you can certainly just play with them and see how it, how it behaves. And of course, there are others. Uh, so. Uh, so we're starting to call this a 5G modem. 5, 5G is more than just a radio. It, it really is about the networking system. So it's a matter of being able to, to tuck in any radio system and, and build it into the networking, the localized networking. So um, uh, including Y gig into 5G um, uh, is probably a valid thing to do. You can actually put a software layer in there and just bring up a 5G system. Um, so single carrier. Uh, we, we like single carrier. Um, originally, the Y gig spec had an OFDM and an SC component in it. Uh, they've dropped the OFDM. The OFDM didn't drive the antennas very efficiently as the PAPR issues. So it, it just got removed, just got deleted from, from the spec. Um, but these are the various different modes. Um, nothing, nothing magic about that. Uh, 64 QAM is quite difficult. One of the limitations is the phase noise. So that's actually quite, quite a difficult thing to do. You need to be really careful how you, how you manage the, the 64 cram. Uh, High-speed ADC DACs. Um, the ADCs on CMOS processes are um, possibly the bottleneck, if you like, in the whole system. Those ADCs are, are quite advanced pieces of, um, of design. So, you, um, uh, so, so special pieces of technology, but that, it does work pretty well on um, 28 nanometer um, devices. Uh, you can actually probably get up to about seven gigahertz nowadays. Um, uh, so uh, we have a very fairly flexible system, actually. So we, we can build a, uh, so, so Y gig itself is part of Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi is by inherently a, a TDMA system. Um, uh, but we can extend that. Um, and, and build FDD, and I'll show you an example of that later in this presentation. Um, the Mac itself, again, is quite complex. I don't know if anyone's seen the uh, Wi-Fi spec. It's 3,500 pages. It's bigger than the Bible. Um, so it's huge. But we've, um, we've brought one of those up, and we're quite happy about that. Um, 
So it goes to say that we have a, a reasonable verification methodology, which is essential if you're building complex pieces of silicon. Um, okay, so what does, what does YGIG require in terms of compute? Um, this is really the way that the, the, um, the, the modem functions. Uh, this is really about uh, the start of packet processing, sets up the, the data component of the rest of the packet, um, and ideally you want to set up reasonably long packets, um, because th this is a, has about a, a three microsecond overhead, so you want to build reasonable aggregations to make this thing work um, reasonably efficiently. But these numbers down here are are significant. So if you want to go away and build something which is low cost, you, you have to be um, on your toes to make that happen. I mean, you can buy um, pieces of IP that um, are really very flexible, um, but they're not uh, uh, highly, uh, how should we say, efficient implementations for low power and low cost. So this technology is really about focused on this particular standard but providing some flexibility such that you can add features in software. So it's programmable enough, is the, is the terminology that we use. Um, and to do that, um, we have this parallel system design. Uh, and enough to say that we map the whole pipeline onto this parallel uh, processing technology. I won't bore you with that detail on that, because I have another slide here, which will bore you with the details. So really this is about um, getting a, um, a standard microprocessor so you can use all the standard um, open source compiler technology and effectively extend it such that it drives a massive accelerator um, which consists of some fixed function units, LDPC in this case, FFT, and a, and a fairly unconventional but very powerful um, vector processor. And uh, so th this effectively puts the whole modem as a piece of software, um, but highly tuned. Um, so all that's, all that's um, uh, uh, well and good, but without designing the modem properly, it's, it's, it's useless. So um, we put a significant effort into making the, uh, the front end of the design such that we can get good performance out of it. And this is a, um, uh, a 64 gram example of, um, of a simulation. Simulation matches the silicon exactly, so that we know when we make the silicon that it will work. Um, and we're, so we're very confident about the technology um, uh, working in field. The, the Mac sub subsystem is, is very flexible. We can program it to do many different things. Um, point to multipoint um, uh, uh, with a, it, with a number of method, methods of, uh, of allowing the efficiency to be, to be reused. So you can borrow some features from, from YGIG um, or Wi-Fi and use it in this um, uh, so that you can do turnarounds at very high speed so you can optimize the up and down data. So you don't have to allocate fixed band, bandwidth to up and down. Uh, that's all very dynamic. Uh, 802.11ay is starting to introduce OFDM back into the, uh, into the spec, which is interesting. And I think that's really because they want to start to use um, uh, MIMO systems, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, so, um, rain fade. So this is, I think this is a favorite slide of Mark's. Um, these, are, these, are, these are numbers that, w that we've, we've tested. Um, and in fact, actually, the truth be told, we were actually getting 300 meters or so um, at the multi-gigabits. So by scaling down the, uh, the modem's uh, bit rate, you, you can extend its range. Um, but the, the, the rain fade really isn't, isn't a, a significant issue when you, when you use these systems. Um, this is some real measurements that Bristol University have done in terms of um, RMS de delay spread. And it just so happens that um, you don't get much delay spread. This is around seven nanoseconds or so. And the YGIG spec, because it's really a technology that's designed for equalizing in room, which has lots of reflections off walls, it has a, it has a sort of a 20 nanosecond uh, equalization. So this is more than adequate for line of sight um, millimeter wave. Um, 
So there is a maximum performance on the antennas, I think, as um, uh, has been discussed earlier on in a few more few a few presentations earlier. So I don't think I need to go into that. Um, so this is the BH2. As I say, it's in the lab now. Um, it's it's working really well. We've got all the software up and running, um, and uh, without any bugs, which is great for, for a complex piece of silicon. So we're really happy about that. Um, and this is, this is specifically for, a, for a, um, designed for a specific customer in the US. It's a, it's a, it's a dual channel system um, with a, a, um, a, a PCIe um, component that allows you to plug it into a network processor. So you can build essentially little router boxes, very low cost router boxes. Um, you can also turn this into an FDD link if we wish, mainly because the Mac allows you to do this. It's very flexible, as it has the right connections in the right <coughs> place to do that, which is um, nothing to do with the wide gig spec. The wide gig doesn't work that way. Um, so, in summary, um, we have uh, a number of these prototype radios. These are quite old now. Um, uh, in, in the harbour side in Bristol. And that, that is the harbour in Bristol. Um, uh, that was taken from uh, someone who was actually in, in a, a little crane there and took the photograph of that. But the, we have a number of these um, up and running with um, uh, producing high-speed links. Uh, and uh, we're actually putting a few more of these up. And we will actually be replacing these with the, uh, with the newer silicon, which is going to give us slightly more performance than, than these particular devices. Um, so, in conclusion, uh, flexible millimeter beamforming. Uh, beamforming is a key, car, a key component of, of YGIG. It's flexible enough to be used outdoors. Um, we can take it to um, other bands. We can take it into the E-band. We can take it into uh, any number of other bands we wish, depending on what RF technology is available. So it will just map. Um, we're looking at the uh, 5G uh, new radio. Um, so we'll be taking all the knowledge that we've gathered in the millimeter wave with respect to uh, beamforming, network beamforming, uh, management um, into, into the 5G. It's a natural fit. Um, uh, 60 gigahertz um, has a roadmaps um, which are way past the 10 gigabit domain. So that, that's actually quite straightforward to do. Um, UK impact, well, we really need to harmonize the regulations. Producing silicon like this is expensive. And if you can't sell it locally, and if you don't bring the regulations into order, then it just doesn't happen in the UK. It's as simple as that. Um, we have a test bed, and we're actually extending it for uh, moving vehicles. Uh, going forwards, some interesting work going in, going on in that area, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Do you have more information about your beam forming stacks? How many degrees and? Uh, so th that's really uh, so. So the. The beam forming component has, has been taken straight, lifted straight out of the YGIG specification. However, we can optimize that so that there are things, YGIG it, it tends to be fairly slowly in the way that it does the, its formal scanning. We can certainly cut that down to make that a lot more efficient. Um, and uh, the antenna design is, is really uh, gives you effectively your, your sectorization and you, you don't necessarily need the flexibility that YGIG gives you, you can actually design the, the antenna such that you would reduce the number of sectors, so you can, you can make that a lot more efficient. So, so it depends. Depending what application you have, um, we can put together an antenna setup that's specifically designed for that and the um, beamforming control for that, for that particular application. And that's the value of this IP. We're, we can change it significantly depending on what you want to do. You're welcome.